Welcome DRG Legacy Curious Players. I am the guy that's been exploring the game's early builds for years, and I'm hoping to help y'all out a bit. DRG Legacy is an anniversary event where players are able to play an early build of DRG via a launch option. This is exclusive to Steam, simply because Steam makes doing things like this super simple. Here, take this light bulb. It'll light up red if you're a little too late for DRG Legacy. Seems we're good. Between the actual Early Access launch, aka Update 7, and DRG Legacy, aka Update 11, they made some important balance changes which made Driller more viable, but still kinda sucks, Gunner more viable, and they had just added a biome feature you know and love. Besides the lack of content, what are the main differences between this and the current game? Most importantly, there are no character builds. There are no grindy shortcuts that make your dwarf considerably more powerful. This will sound incredibly cheesy. When it comes to early DRG, the best thing you can upgrade is your knowledge and raw skill. Why should you play this? Honestly, if you're not super interested in DRG, there is no reason to check out the early builds. You could just watch someone else do it for you, like me. For me, on the other hand, it would definitely be... Q mining. I low-key want for people to go into DRG Legacy blind, but I said fuck it. I finally have an excuse to make a guide video. Just let me have this. This is my coping mechanism for the lack of an art showcase. First and foremost, as bad as the terrain scanner is in this build, it can only be brought up via the M key. You might want to change this in the controls as soon as possible. The terrain scanner Mark II shows a top-down view of the area. It features absolutely zero markers for objectives or other game objects and is pretty much only useful for digging dirt. For hosts, you will also have to use the M key as a shortcut for the mission map. This one you cannot do anything about without messing with the game files. Oh, and enjoy the one hour mission rotations. You can check out the cut mission type Search and Extract. It's a non-linear Morkite mission where you have to very carefully look for Morkite. Seriously, you might be down here for a while if you're not attentive, as it doesn't take too much effort to get lost in the caves which honestly gives the sense of exploring something that's actually unknown. Egg Hunt in early DRG is a linear mission. You will finally find out that I wasn't exaggerating when I kept calling this a reskin of Mining Expedition. Elimination only has one Dreadnought variation and these markers on the screen at all times. So that's fun. The Dreadnought here basically features two health bars. Enemy waves are also able to spawn throughout the mission, but you are able to skip an entire Dreadnought by making the resupply pod land on its ass. In Dense Biozone, you'll be able to find another piece of cut content. Check out Classified Siri... <laughs> Just kidding. You can find the Pudo Shell. It'll leak out toxic liquid periodically. Don't read too much into that. In my opinion, it was a good call to cut this thing. It's practically a random purposeless damage source just to mess with people. The Sandblasted Corridors is the most chill biome in the early builds, as it's completely lagging the notorious features like sand sharks, wind tunnels, and so on. Crystalline Caverns has those tiny tunnels which pretty much function as a driller check. When it comes to the difficulty, Hazard Level doesn't go beyond Hazard 4. Also, you'll only find the most basic types of glyphids available, assuming you're playing Update 11. A big thing is that it's harder to outrun bugs especially swarmers as the overall movement speed used to be a little slower. You'll also find the tourist mode when going below hazard 1, although I advise pretending that it doesn't exist, since this won't reward you with anything but will still spawn enemies, even if they are incredibly weak. And be sure to visit the long forgotten Robert's secret on the space ring. Alright, now some key differences you should really keep in mind. The huge lack of cosmetics will tempt the weak, puny dwarf to quit the game, but I know you're better than that. The only dwarf variations you get here is either no upgrades or upgrades. You'll have to enjoy the little pleasures in these builds. Like how the flare gun only holds one singular flare at a time. How you could only hold three platforms on the platform gun. How gunner has no shields. You might want to rewire yourself for that one. And here is a heads up. Don't go around jumping on engineers' platforms expecting a... Yeah, that upgrade wasn't even in the stratosphere yet. 
There are also no power attacks since that was ultimately the replacement for Q mining. But you do have flare upgrades. And completely forget about the existence of perks. Aside from Born Ready. More on that soon. Each class carries a decent but generic high explosive grenade. Try to get a feel for the grenade's timer and then attempt to awkwardly position the throw so the nade goes off just right. Scout, however, still maintains his IFGs, which has the exact same effects, but you'll have to upgrade for the damage bonus and it will bounce around like a normal grenade before activation. The power of the C4 is not to be trifled with. A fully upgraded C4 can one-shot Praetorians. Actually, you might notice that they are overall faster to kill. This was before they pretty much doubled the Pret's health. The C4 also comes in handy to chip away at the Dreadnought's first health bar. You will never see the Spitballer sleeping, and it has no weak points. It's very worthwhile to keep in mind that its projectile is destructible. Don't forget that you do not have Gunner's Shield to save you. Despite your feelings on it, you should consider killing loot bugs. They award with a ton more Nitra and Gold per bug. Also, you know, granting bonus loot has always been their intended purpose. When mining that Holomite... No, wait, I... I advise mining it from top to bottom. Terrain and minerals will remain suspended in mid-air and refuse to crumble. Sometimes you'll encounter some neat mid-air formations, which can then be greatly abused, effectively making all melee glyphids useless. Kind of completely breaking the purpose of making a guide to dealing with glyphids, to be honest. Now we're entering the tactical exploit territory. The only worthwhile tips you can get for early DRG is how to use the game's logic to your advantage. Two things you should keep in mind from modern DRG is the mule depositing spam, I do this by spamming Q and E super fast, and speeding up the platform gun with animation cancel. Very important, do not attempt to reload animation cancel here. You have to wait all the way until the animation ends for the reload to count meaning that the devs deliberately added reload cancelling to modern DRG. I thank them for that every day. But something that you can do is a very clunky born ready. If you switch your weapon right after you fire the final shot in a clip, the reload will be performed in the background. You must roughly wait out the reload time before switching back, then you'll be able to extend your firepower with a fully loaded clip. This will take some time and effort to nail down, but it can make a day and night difference in scouts' effectiveness. This exploit is the easiest to perform on the PGL, and you'll probably do it by accident. Q-mining. Hilarious to think that at the time it was a bit controversial. Performing a Q-mine might take a bit of time to get used to. You first simply swing your pickaxe at something. As soon as the pick makes contact with the surface, you then quickly switch your weapon and repeat those actions. Most commonly, the Q key is used here, hence its name. Mastering this can roughly increase your mining and melee speed by... 15%. Yes, some people complained about this. I guess there was really nothing else to complain about back when overclocks didn't exist. When it comes to large minerals, you may assume you're soft locked into carrying it after attempting to drop it with left mouse. You'll have to press control or bring out your laser pointer to reliably drop the mineral. You only have skill and RNG-based tossing available around these parts. If you want to try tossing it, you'll have to quickly, or depending on how far you want to throw it, flick your mouse and press control at just the right time to send the mineral flying. To get a feel for when you have to bring out the laser pointer, you'll just have to keep practicing, really. This trick is much easier to perform as a host. Something neat they got rid of is the ability to deposit large minerals while the mule is walking so you don't have to spam mule calls because you found a pearl. And here's my last warning. The mule used to be a buggier mess in the early builds. If the mule gets stuck for whatever reason, try your best to reach the draw pod and pray that the doors have a failsafe. While you wait at the escape pod, you can do cool stuff like this. You can thank me later for whatever chaos I just unleashed. However you'll end up feeling about the early builds of the game, the truth is that this was actually enough to get me into DRG at the time. The biggest difference is that when I started playing, I didn't have 50 fucking shield! There's a small notion going around that I was involved with DRG Legacy. I mean, I wish that I was. The truth is that the devs have been meaning to do something like this since the first anniversary. But at the time they didn't have a smooth way of executing it that wouldn't have led to confusion. 
If I was involved, I would have absolutely pushed for an official release of the pre-alpha. No guarantees as some of the devs are hard to persuade, but maybe some other time? One last thing before I send you off. There is a very cool secret they put in the corner behind the mission terminal. When you find your way there, be sure to spam E until something happens. Consider archiving the build, okay, bye!